Hi everyone and welcome back to a new episode of Diagnose Dan. Hybrid and electric vehicles have been around for quite some time now. So the chances of one pulling into your shop are pretty big. So we better get prepared. In this series, I'd like to take you through the high voltage components of hybrid and electric vehicles. In this episode, we're going to talk about the high voltage battery. We're going to take it apart and I'll take you through the internals and try to explain how they work. So let's do this together. The battery we're working on in this episode came from a Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV, a similar vehicle to this one. Now, since we are dealing with high voltage, first we've got to talk about safety. But what kind of voltage are we dealing with? Let's hook up a scan tool and find out. A high voltage battery has got a battery management unit. Once you have established communication with the vehicle, find the battery management unit. And once you're in there, you should be able to find a data pit called battery total voltage. And on this particular vehicle, the battery total voltage is about 305 volts. A battery voltage of over 300 volts is way higher than the battery voltage we were used to in the automotive industry. So this voltage needs a different approach. 300 volts is potentially dangerous. It can also kill you. So whenever you're working on a high voltage system, take care of your personal safety and the safety of others. Whenever you're about to take a measurement on a high voltage system, please make sure your equipment is safe to use. It should be rated for the voltage you're about to work on. The meter and the lead should be rated at least category 3 600 volts. This battery is about 300 volts. But please be aware that in the future, voltages might get higher and you might need to choose a higher voltage tool. The rating should be printed clearly visible on the body of the tool, like on these two snap-on units. If the rating is not there or if there is any doubt, please don't use that tool. The first thing we need to do when working on hybrid or electric vehicles is make sure there's no live high voltage at the component we're working on. But sometimes we just can't avoid this. For instance, when we're opening up this battery pack, there's going to be live high voltage inside. Now imagine I'm working inside this battery pack with regular tools and I drop them. They could easily short out the battery and start a fire or even worse. That's why when we're working on live high voltage, we need to use specialized insulated tools like these tools made by Snap-on. Now please be aware that in most countries, you need to be certified to work on live high voltage. And unfortunately, just watching this video on YouTube isn't enough. Now up until the point you're 100% sure there's no live high voltage at a component anymore and you've confirmed it, you've got to wear rubber insulated gloves. These gloves are class zero and to protect them from the automotive environment because working on a battery like this, you can easily cut them on sharp edges or poke a hole in it. You should wear leather gloves on top of them to protect them. Now every time you use these gloves, make sure you check for leaks. 
You can easily do so by rolling them up, put some pressure on them, and listen and watch for any leaks. Now please remember, to electricity it doesn't matter if you've got a big hole or a small hole, electricity will find its way. Now don't just think about your personal safety, also think about the safety of others. Make sure people can't just walk up to high voltage parts and make sure you warn them about the hazards and about what's going on. High voltage components can be recognized by the orange cables or by the death threats on the stickers on the components themselves. Now we should never touch these components before we are absolutely 100% sure there's no live high voltage. Now there is a procedure to make sure of this. In the next clip, I want to take you through each step of this procedure and show you how it's done. Step one, let other people know you're working on the high voltage system. Step two, make sure the keys are nowhere near the vehicle. Then disconnect the 12 volt battery. In the next step, we're going to remove the high voltage service plug. On this Outlander, it is located on the floor in front of the back seat. Now, since this is an orange high voltage part, we need to wear our safety gear. This is the floor in front of the back seat of this Outlander. First of all, we need to remove this plastic cover. And underneath the plastic cover, there is a metal cover being held down by four 10 mils, which we should undo. After undoing those, we should be able to remove the panel and we should get access to that service plug. Now this part is going to be high voltage, so I'm wearing my insulated gloves with my leather gloves on top. In the car, it was kind of difficult to see what we were doing, but fortunately, we've got exactly the same battery lying around. Now this is the piece sticking through the car floor. Let's get it out of the way so we can see what we're doing. What we need to do is pull up on this tab, and there's a little tab over here which we need to push. And then we can release the service plug. After removing the service plug, the next step is to wait for five minutes for the capacitors inside the system to discharge. After that, we need to take a voltage measurement to make sure there's absolutely no high voltage at the component we're working on. Now, there are two common ways to take a voltage measurement. One, using a two-pole voltmeter. This one is made by Fluke and of course, again, at least category three, 600 volts. Now, this method is preferred by a lot of techs. Why? There are no settings. There's nothing you can screw up. On the other hand, if you're using a multimeter, make sure you know what you're doing. A multimeter has got different settings and different ports. If you put your lead 
in the wrong port, this meter could turn into an amp meter. And when you're measuring amps, there is no resistance between these two leads. And it basically becomes a jumper wire. Now, it isn't a great idea to go measuring high voltage with a jumper wire. So if you're using a multimeter, make sure what you're doing. It isn't going to be the new guy who's gonna screw up, but it's gonna be the experienced guy who's getting careless. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use both. This particular high voltage battery has got three high voltage connectors. One at the front, going to the front, inverter converter assembly and it has got two high voltage electrical connectors at the back one at the left going to the rear inverter converter assembly because this car has an electric motor on the front axle and on the rear axle so it can do four wheel electric drive and it has got a high voltage electrical connector on the rear right going to the charger this is what the high voltage battery looks like installed underneath the vehicle. It is bolted directly to the frame. It has got three surface hatches to get to the high voltage electrical connectors. Two at the back and one all the way in front of the battery. I'm going to open up this surface hatch and take our voltage measurement over here and find out if this vehicle is safe to work on. With the surface hats removed, we can clearly see the positive and negative high voltage cables leaving the battery. I'm going to take my voltage measurement at those two terminals. And if everything went according to plan, there no longer should be high voltage on those two terminals. Now before you trust your tool, always do a quick check to see if it's working like it's supposed to. Let's do the first measurement using a two-pole voltmeter. And as you can see, just continuity, but no voltage. The system is safe to work on. Now let's do it again, but this time we're using the multimeter. And again, no voltage. So this system is safe to work on. Now I know that you guys were secretly hoping that system wasn't safe, that the high voltage would still be there. What would that look like? Now, of course I'm gonna show it to you, but in order to do that, I need to reconnect the surface plug, hook up the auxiliary battery again, and turn on the ignition, and after that, we're gonna do the same measurement again and see what we get. Now let's do that measurement again, but this time the system is ready. And that's what a reading looks like when there's high voltage. Now let's do that same measurement again, but this time using the multimeter. The system is ready, so this should be high voltage. And sure enough, we're reading about 305 volts DC. Now in order for me to explain to you guys what's inside this battery pack and how it operates, we need to open it up. Let's start off by removing the top and see what's inside.
34 10 mil bolts later and we're finally ready to lift the top of the battery case which is made out of plastic by the way and the bottom is made of metal. So let's lift it and see what's inside. From now on, we should be extra careful. The high voltage terminals are now exposed and we could easily make a mistake by accidentally touching those terminals. But as long as we use our common sense and we play by the rules, we should be all right. So right now we're ready to take this battery pack further apart. I'm gonna take you through the components and explain to you how they work and how they operate. We're gonna talk about the cooling system, safety features, contactors, cell balancing, battery management systems, cell management systems, whatever there is to know about a high voltage battery, you will learn watching this series. I hope you enjoyed this video and I certainly hope you join me next time. Diagnose Dan, fixed it again. See you next time guys.